The following opinions are solely those of Botest.com and its test captain. Hi, Captain Steve for Botest.com, and today I'm going to conduct a sea trial and review of the Z9 from Nitro. It's at the top of the four-boat lineup of performance bass boats from Nitro and well-qualified to take fishermen from weekends on the water to full-blown tournaments. We'll start by looking at the Z9's controllability with the trolling motor. She comes standard with a Minn Kota 24-volt 80-pound thrust motor that offered excellent control of the Z9. An indicator at the top shows the direction of the thrust, allowing us to get nice and close to the shoreline and maneuver in and around the rocks to find those shaded areas we all like. In the deck, one, two, three, four, five compartments. Let's take a look at them one at a time, starting with this aft one. Well, here's a great place to put tools, rags, spare oil. The bins are removable. Look what's underneath. Easy access to the batteries, oil, and a remote oil fill. And underneath, access to the pumps. I really have to give tracker high marks for the way that they make their mechanical components accessible. I've seen other boats where I can't get to any of these things. There's even a 20 amp battery charger with a plug-in at the transom. Just ahead of that, two separate live wells, Plano tackle box storage to either side, both include removable bins. Each of these live wells has a 20 gallon capacity. I have to say I'm happy with the stability as I walk back and forth across the casting deck. In the cockpit, there's three across seating, and notice steps in between the seats that even include a grab handle at the front. Now, the Z9 is available in either a single console or, as you can see here, a dual console. But even if you do get the dual console setup, this one's easily removable. The helm console features a reconfigured switch panel with a soft touch shroud. There's a flush mounted Low Rance HDS 7C fish finder with GPS, and no less than 39 optional units are offered. And Nitro went with a full instrumentation panel that includes a water pressure gauge and an oil reservoir level indicator. And all instrumentation can be dimmed. Just at the step, a measuring stick conveniently located, two compartments, one for storage, one for waste, with an easily removable receptacle and a spare little cubby hole. At the foredeck, the port storage compartment has standard rod racks, two more storage compartments in the center. The starboard compartment is open, but there's an option for putting rod racks inside. Forward, still another storage compartment with access for the nav light. Notice how there's anti-fatigue padding just underneath the carpet, and there are two pedestal stations to accommodate captains of short stature or tall. At the bow, a recessed well for the foot control, an optional low rance HDS7, waterproof switches. There are bungees to both port and starboard to secure rods to the deck for the quick jaunts from one fishing spot to another. The Nitro Z9 has a length overall of 20 feet 9 inches, a beam of 96 inches, and a draft of 16 inches. With an empty weight of 2,100 pounds, half fuel, and two people on board, plus test power, we had an estimated test weight of 3,205 pounds. With the 250 horsepower Mercury Pro SX Optimax turning a 14 and 5 8 by 25 Tempest propeller, we reached a top speed of 70 miles per hour at 5,800 RPM. At that speed, we're burning 22.9 gallons per hour, giving us a range of 187 miles. Best crews came in at 3,000 RPM and 30.1 miles per hour. That speed reduced the fuel burn to only 4.95 gallons per hour, giving us a range of 372 miles and an endurance of 12 hours and 24 minutes while still maintaining a 10% reserve. We had a quick time to plane of only 2.6 seconds, reached 20 miles per hour in 5.1 seconds, 30 came and went in 7.5 seconds, 40 in 9.8, and we continued accelerating through 50 miles per hour in 13.2 seconds. There's no doubt that the Z9 is an exciting boat to drive. She accelerates quickly and once on step, things really start to happen in short order. She only seems to exhibit chine walk when it was induced by outside influences such as crossing a wake. Other than that, she remained stable throughout the acceleration curve. When chine walk did start, it was easy to correct and continue on through it. Naturally, at full speed, we didn't do any cranking and banking, as the hull design is made for more of a straight and fast type of operation. But at lower speeds, she can take full-on hard overturns and come around in a fairly flat attitude. In that she has higher freeboard than the average bass boat, she's able to take waves quite well. 70 mile per hour generates a lot of wind, and the windscreen at the console did a nice job of deflecting the wind out of my face and into my hair. She's offered in either a single or dual console, and I don't think I'd want to be a passenger for any extended period of time without the same benefit of having the wind deflected out of my face. When pulling power off, her slippery hull allows her to continue a head-on plane for several seconds until her own momentum drops before finally getting her off plane and settling her back into the water stern first. And no matter how fast I took the power off, the following wave showed no sign of washing over the transom. 
The Z9 is not only a comfortable boat to be in and on, but she's got the capabilities to qualify her for fishing and tournament levels. That's my look at Nitro Z9. For BoatTest.com, I'm Captain Steve. We'll see you on the water.